So I'm going to, if we can lower the volume a little bit, so that, uh, I certainly appreciate y'all all being here tonight. Can you hear me in the back, back there? Because I want to make sure you can hear me. But, uh, you know, first of all, uh, it is so important that uh, y'all have showed up tonight because the future of Beaumont isn't about the mayor's race, it's about the community of Beaumont, and it's about the community showing up. And we, we, we here in Southeast Texas, we are great. A matter of fact, when we have hurricanes and we have floods, you know, the national news reports on how we show up for one another. And so we, we know how to do that. And this right here, this right here isn't this, and as corny as this sounds, excuse me, uh, this isn't just about this moment, but look around at everybody here. This, to me, is about a movement. It's, a, it's about a movement about trust, about tra transparency, it's about togetherness. And we've got to communicate all through that. And when you say that, I mean, those are great catchphrases, but what does that mean? Well, I'm going to be very specific because as many of you know, and, and maybe all of you know that are here, I ran for mayor uh, a year and a half ago, and I lost. And I learned from that. But uh, I got acquainted with the community, and I've been working the last several months to get better acquainted with the community because the one, th one area that I did really poorly was the north and south part of town. So I began to go out there to get better acquainted because I realized that that was on me. You know, when, when other people say, hey, Roy, you know, you should have wanted all this. When I look back at it and I saw the numbers, what, it, it happened just like it's supposed to. I hadn't done my part, but I've learned from that, and I have been out, and I've been talking to people and hearing their needs, and and certainly infrastructure, we, you know, uh, public safety, all those catchphrases are very important, and uh, I don't want to minimize any of those. And and most recently, like on council, when I talk about uh, when I talk about tra uh, trust, and I talk about uh, transparency. I'm really not trying to throw shade on any one person because I realize maybe sometimes when things are done, they're not thinking things through. But as a businessman in the mortgage business, I know that I have to be careful of how I communicate with people. How you communicate with them is important. And uh, most recently, we have seen uh, our, our fire department, has, uh, our fire union, has recently sued our city. And, Herein lies a problem, and I'm not, again, lying fault. There's two sides to every story, but we have some real issues in this city about looking unattractive to people on the outside. And, uh, and you know, and we need to deal with those. We don't need to ignore them. And, and one thing I know, and I'm going to go back to the fire union, this is just what I know, and there's a lot I don't know. Uh, two years ago, a little less than two years ago, the city council voted to uh, bring EMS underneath the fire union. And uh, that solved a couple of problems because at that time the fire union had pension problems. It, it didn't have enough revenue and those things were audited and they were saying, hey, we gotta do something about it. That was also in the midst of COVID and our ambulance service was uh, deficient. It wasn't compliant in several areas and I'm sure we're not the only area that had that problem but we didn't have enough staff, we didn't have enough people in there. It was taking too long for them to get certain places. So they put them underneath the fire department so that the fire department could work with them. As late as last March, March 8th actually, the council meeting uh, increased uh, their, uh, agreed to increase their commitment to the pension to 20% from 16 and a quarter. And, uh, and with that, they understood too that they need to hire more people to make it, to keep that solvent. And so all that's going along, and certainly we're still having problems with our ambulance service in terms of response times and enough trucks on the road. But then right after December, you know, it was announced that they were forming a new emergency medical services department and they were bringing EMS out from underneath the fire department. And there was no council vote on that. That was just announced. And the perception to me is, well, we know we had a pension problem. Our bar, 
our bond grade in, on December 21st in the city of Beaumont was actually downgraded. So that means it cost us more money. And one of the reasons it was downgraded was because of the pension problem. But the solution we had for it was just getting ripped off the table, which without a whole lot of, as far as I know, without any public talk and without our council being able to be involved and engaged in that. And, and, and that's not a good look. And we still, we have the problem that we have more firemen on many days than we do paramedics on our ambulances. So how are you gonna be moving this? So those are questions that I have to answer that I think the city needs to be addressing whenever they're talking about making changes in that, in that program. And I see with us uh, Robert Dunn, who's the president of the school board right there, who I've gotten, uh, I've, I've gotten most of the appointments with him. And, and I appreciate his presence here tonight because I've gotten to uh, visit with him on several occasions. Another thing that's, uh, you know, sometimes when people start hearing this, uh, they say, well, why are you talking about this, Roy? And I'll get there. Uh, the VISD has made great strides. Uh, we were at Jones Park Elementary this morning, a few of us, and Trinity has a group that was there that was volunteering and has been. Uh, but I think BASD has made great strides. There are a lot of challenges in this community. But let's be clear that we've got kids that are being raised where basically they're unsupervised and unloved. So when they get to school, there's a lot of issues to be dealing with. And this includes even in pre-K and kindergarten. So BISD is having to meet a lot of additional needs that they hadn't had to make in the, in the past. And what we're not talking about as a community and as mayor or a mayoral candidate that I can be talking about, we as a community need to show up for our school district. If we want Beaumont to be better, we've got to show up. So, you know, in terms of voting for me, I've had people say, you know, why should I vote for you, Roy? And I say, well, I'm going to lay it all out. But at the end of the day, the way this community is going to change, it's not going to be because Roy West became mayor. I'm crystal clear on that. It, it is only if this community shows up. And I know that we can. We're capable of it. And we also need to change the perception. We need to change the talk. You know, when you talk negatively about a district in the, in the area that you live in, it's really hard to get substitute teachers. It's really hard to get teachers. And we can be our own worst enemy. And if people think this has nothing to do with the city, being in the mortgage business, I know it has everything to do with the city. I'm happy to do loans in Orange County and Hardin County and in Mid County, but a lot of people don't want to move to Beaumont, and it's often because of the schools. And as a city, we need to acknowledge that we need to partner, we need to be in the same boat and rowing in the same direction with our schools. And now they manage their schools, and we need to manage the city, but we can work together through collaboration. You know, and I, I see some representatives of Lamar University, and I know that. Uh, I can't speak for them, but I know that they love this community, and I've already partnered in lots of ways. And, you know, there are so many partnerships, white churches, black churches. It is important that we get a little bit uncomfortable because we're used to being comfortable. I've been visiting uh, black churches now for several months, every Sunday, and uh, oftentimes two churches, an 8 o'clock worship and a, and a later worship. And I've been very warmly received. And, and what I've realized, and oftentimes people, you know, I've had people ask me, not in any kind of confrontational way, why are you here? And I say, well, I love the Lord, I love to worship. And this is obviously the most segregated day of the week. And for us to be better together, for us to be a united community, we have to, in fact, be together. So and that may not always happen organically, you know, sometimes it has to be artificial to push it forward. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, and, and as uh, a mayor candidate and as mayor, I'm going to constantly be encouraging our community to show up for one another. It is so easy to criticize and sit on the sidelines. And, you know, in the social media, it happens a lot. But we've got to do better if we want a better Roma. And, you know, as I stand here, you know, you know, people often ask, what is your why? Everybody's got a why. Everybody in this room's got a why about something. Well, you know, we, we have, uh, my wife and I, Tricia, 
Uh, one why is I love my wife and she allows me to do this and thank you so much. Uh, and, and we have, I don't even know where she, oh there she is, video. And, uh, and she tuned in on that. And, and we have, we have five adult children and uh, the three that live here are married. We've got eight grandchildren, six of which live here in this in this city. The city that I was born in, the city that I've gone to school. So, uh, and there's one of them right there, Emily. Thank you for waiting, sweetie. And, but, but let's be honest, that's a big why for me. Because I want my grandkids, if they want to live here, for that to be a real option for them in 15 to 20 years. And if, and if we don't change the direction, you know, Quite honestly, we, we have seen a lot of people leave Beaumont and continue to, and that is not a healthy thing. So we, we, have, we have to be aggressive and we have to be willing to speak the truth. And uh, I, I realize everybody's not gonna agree with this, but from my perception and going across the communities, I believe this to be true. And I believe that we can do something about it, but it's not, I'm not, I'm not running, so be crystal clear. I'm not running to be mayor just to be mayor. I want Boma to be better. So, y'all might all be tired of me two years later, and I'm okay with that. Because I'm not gonna be sitting there not worrying about ruffling feathers. Because my thing is, things need to be done in this city. We've got great people to do it, and we're gonna talk about it. And if somebody has a disagreement or this, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the conversation. And I'm willing to be changed by the conversation. Quite frankly, that's what got me up here. You know, there's been a lot of changes of thought by having conversations and hearing concerns from, from the community. And another thing is, you know, I'm a business partner in three schools and I get to schools a lot. And I, I'll tell you. Uh, and we can get uh, an amen from the Trinity volunteers, uh, a couple of which that I saw come in earlier, and they were at Jones Clark today when I went in there, or with several of us went in there, is when you go into the schools, if you, if you choose to volunteer, and BISD makes it really easy. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you, it's, it's easy. You just have to, you have to fill out a form online, and uh, you're gonna wanna go back. You know, you, you may hear horror stories on social media about the BISD schools, but the truth of the matter, if you go in there, you're gonna find out the administrators and the teachers, I, I believe they probably love teaching and love the kids every bit as much than when I was in school a few decades ago. And I'm not throwing shade on my, my teachers, but I think to be there today, you have to love them more. Because it's hard, there's a lot of challenges. So, you know, I, I think acknowledging that and also, but I think there's great rewards too because these kids, they, they need us. And, and as citizens, we need them. And we need them to know they're important, that they're of value, that there is hope in their life. And for any of us that have ever been in a spot where we feel hopeless and we feel unappreciated, unloved, that's a bad place to feel. And if you're five years old or eight years old or ten years old, that's that's worse. And our most violent offenders right now are juveniles. And, and and that's because we've had this generation of kids that, you know, if you have no hope, they're not worried about going to prison. They're not worried about any of that. Because they hadn't they hadn't known love and they hadn't known other options. But but our city can do a lot about that. And and certainly by supporting our law enforcement by supporting our fire department. Uh, you know, we just made four department hi head hires uh, recently since the budget was formed. And you know, again, I'm criticizing without all the information and I'd love to have it all and the city has the ability to push it out. So I'm ready, I'm ready to drink from the fountain of knowledge and get it. But you know, we've got two new assistant city managers, people that are promoted. We split parks and recreation. So now instead of that being one director, that's two directors, we've got a communication director. I'm not questioning the need for any of that, okay? I, I'm not, but what I am questioning is when you spend a lot more money and there's not salary studies done, 
Uh, and when you hire people that are making 200 or plus 200 thousand dollars a year, and you don't have national searches, I think that's a mistake. I think for your other department heads, you know, you, you, if you want to build, a, a, if you want to build a good city, we have to have good city employees. You know, we we have some employees, full-time employees that start at ten dollars an hour. And then we all know that's not a livable wage. Those, those people are receiving food stamps and other things. And yet, we're going to criticize them when they're doing a poor job out there. You know, we need to examine all this. And you can't fix everything overnight. And certainly not expected to do any of that. But address the issues. Address the challenges. And develop a plan to do it. That is what it's taken. You know, uh, Shannon Allen, when she speaks, our superintendent, she always does a great job of acknowledging the challenges. The school board acknowledges the challenges. They acknowledge what they're doing to fix those problems. All the different things that they're doing. But they always end it, which we need to listen better, is this isn't just a BISD problem, this is a community problem. And if we want a better Beaumont, we've got to be a better Beaumont and we've got to show up. And I know, I know that we can, folks. And, uh, and this me message resonates across the community. And you know, because there are parts of the community that feel unheard. And, and again, I didn't do a great job last time. And I, and I want them because we have to do something with our youth. And that's by collaborating with the schools and Lamar and 501c3s and others having after school programs, athletic programs, because we have to offer alternatives. And when people say, well, Roy, that's not the city's job. Whose job is it? Yeah. Whose job is it? I mean, our city has a declining population. Let's face it. I mean, we all know this. Uh, none of this, we have to do something. And I believe it is the mayor's responsibility to speak truth into the community, even when it's a little bit painful and even when they make it dark somewhere. too long, uh, but my wife's got both her hands on her phone so she can't do this, but uh, I want to make sure, anybody takes a yard sign, it's first weekend in February is when you can post it, so, uh, you know, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, if anybody has questions, my cell phone's on the business card and my personal email's on that, reach out, and sometimes people, you know, they reach out and say, well, I'm sorry to bother you, and I said, look, I invited myself to this party. You know, it is not a bother. You know, if I didn't want to hear from you, I shouldn't have run for mayor. So everybody, what they have to say is important, and I am listening, and I am, I want to be your ears because uh, that, it's so important for us to change things. And you know, we, we've got struggles, we've got, but we've got lots of opportunities. You know, we've got tens of billions of dollars of work in the next 10 years here in Jefferson County. I mean, to the tune of 68 to 80 billion dollars worth of work that has been announced, that has been licensed, that has been permitted. We have so many economic opportunities here, and now as a city, we need to rally because we need to be attractive to those that are coming into the area and let them know that uh, that BISD is a great option and that we want you here in Beaumont. So, hey, thank y'all so much for being here tonight. And, uh, oh, and one more thing before I hand, you know, I want evening meetings. I've been going to uh, neighborhood association meetings. And the reason I want evening council meetings is I go to all the neighborhood association meetings across this city. Guess when they are? In the evenings. So, uh, it may be less convenient for some if we have them during the day but i don't i don't care if more people come or not i want to be i want them to be available to come the majority because if you're inviting people to be a part of the process you need to make it easy for them to do it so i want that and the other thing i want is term limits because quite frankly you know uh we have a city management form of government so the city manager manages uh the city now that doesn't mean the mayor and the council people can't say anything, and you can tell from what I've had to say to mine, I'm going to be talking. And uh, it may take four votes to get things done on council, 
but all it takes is me to decide to open my mouth to be able to talk. And I'm gonna to continue to talk because I think, uh, we, I think there are areas that we can make great, uh, great improvements on. And I think term limits are also important because I don't think people need to serve on our city council for a long period of time. I don't think there's a real benefit in it. But I applaud y'all for being out here tonight. And I sure hope that uh, you can tell friends and encourage friends. And look, you know, sometimes people, everybody's not gonna vote for me. I'm okay with that. I just want people to hear the message. I want them to decide not to vote based on what I'm saying. And, and we want people to turn out because uh, municipal elections, a lot of people just don't vote in those. And all politics are, lo are local. They start here. And we know as our city that it is so important that we get people to show up to vote. And, uh, and we, I'll certainly respect the will, but I believe I feel certain that I have done the work to get elected this coming May, and I'm going to keep working hard.